Welcome to Puebla, Mexico. Buenos dias, everybody. My name is Lauren. And I'm Seth. And today we are in Puebla, Mexico. Yep, this place is incredible so far and it's got a lot of categories that it has like the biggest in, the smallest in, or the best in. And that's on a worldwide scale, not just Mexico. So it's yeah. really, really cool. Oh, sorry. Yeah, there are a lot of things in Puebla that make this place super unique and amazing. Yeah. So come join us as we explore the city. Yep, let's go check it out. All right, vamos. <laughs> So right away when we got to Puebla, a couple of my first impressions were that it feels like a very organized city. It doesn't have that chaotic feel for most cities of this size. And it's interesting because I did a little investigating and it turns out that this was is what is called the first perfect city in all of the Americas. So I have no idea why they call it a perfect city. All that essentially means is it was the first city in the Americas that was built specifically for the Spanish. So that basically they just planned and decided to build this city here. Like no old ancient cities were torn down. So it was planned from the beginning. So especially here in the Centro, you can really see that. It's very easy to navigate. It's very straightforward. And I think driving here seems like it would be a breeze as well. We are here in the Socolo of Puebla, and this is actually the first city block to be laid out when they were organizing the city. And if you look on Google Maps, you'll see that the city kind of resembles a checkerboard as to how organized it is. But right behind me is what I'm really interested in right now. This is actually the second largest cathedral in Mexico, and those towers are the tallest twin bell towers in Mexico. So pretty cool, and you can tell just by standing here that the sheer size of this cathedral is just outstanding and it is open today so we're gonna go in and check it out and see what the interior looks like we just finished walking through this beautiful cathedral they have very beautiful frescas in there high vaulted ceilings chandeliers it's just amazing to see uh, there is no filming and no photo taking rules so we wanted to be respectful of that and also it's just something that you can easily come and see for yourself when you're in the city construction began on this cathedral in the 1500s and it wasn't completed until 1664 or at least the main facade wasn't completed until 1664 so it took over a hundred years to make One of the most amazing things to love about Puebla is that it has like year-round spring-like weather uh, because of the high elevation. This city, uh, we've actually been a bit winded. This city is over 7,000 feet above sea level, surrounded by mountains and volcanoes. It actually, the state of Puebla actually has three, Mexico's three tallest volcanoes, including the third tallest mountain in North America, which is here in Puebla. But yeah, the weather has been absolutely incredible. We're approaching summer now, so it's raining a lot. It doesn't rain as much in the winter. But, uh, but it's been like, right now it's like 73 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's been like in the 50s at night and the whole time we've been here, it's been in that range, about 50s to 70s. We have been hit with some rain, but comes for a few hours and then leaves. It's actually supposed to be raining right now. So don't always believe the weather <laughs> in Mexico. On this really nice pedestrian only street here in Puebla called uh, Calle Cinco de Mayo Street. You got street performers on all sides, ice cream machines, and just a lot going on. Every type of store you can think of here. It's really nice. Hot sauce and ketchup on pizza, guys. You got to get with it. It's a thing here. It's good. Muy bueno. So yeah, all over Mexico we've seen it like ketchup, hot sauce, and Worcester, ugh, Worcester sauce. No way, nobody can say that. <laughs> <laughs> they put it on pizza out here. But the ketchup's not like it is in the US or anything like that. It's thinner and it's sweeter. It's almost like ketchup meets sweet and sour. And it's actually pretty good on the pizza. Don't knock it till you try it. I like it. The sheer amount of street food here I've seen, like little food stalls in the walls, actual little food carts and everything else, just street, like food that you can get quickly from the street is the most I've seen anywhere in Mexico so far. It's really, really impressive. And there's a lot of variety and things you can get here too. It's awesome. We are about to walk into the Biblioteca Palafaxiana. 
and it is the first public library that had opened in the Americas in the 1600s and it is still open with over 40,000 books and manuscripts that range from the 15th century to the 20th century. So it's going to be really amazing to see all of these books. just left Biblioteca Parafaxiana and it was absolutely gorgeous and 100% free. A lot of the books are just looking ancient so it's super cool to see. ¿Cuánto para melón? 17. 33 de cambio. Alejandro. Alejandro. Armando. Armando. Nice to meet you. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Adiós. You'll see that a lot of gorgeous tiles are intertwined with the architecture here. Those are actually Talavera tiles that are made in Puebla and they originate in Puebla and they're in a lot of the buildings like they were in the uh, Biblioteca Palafaxiana uh, floor. You could see them in there. They're also kind of inside of the architecture at our hotel as well. So they're dabbled throughout all the buildings here and they're absolutely gorgeous. So right behind me in that building there is the entrance to the tunnels that are under Puebla. Now it's actually really cool because these tunnels were built in the 1500s but they were folkloric for centuries after that and a complete secret. They weren't discovered by the modern world until 2016 for the first time. But before that they were a story that grandparents would tell their grandkids like you know there's tunnels under the city. Yeah, like, yeah right grandpa those don't exist. So now you can just you can go and pay 10 pesos to go explore them under the city. It's actually closed at the moment. We aren't sure if it's like closed closed or just closed because it's Sunday. So we're going to try again tomorrow, but it could be temporarily closed because of COVID, you know, like tight spaces uh, exploring the tunnels. But either way, that's still pretty freaking cool. So right behind me here and right over there, it looks like subway station entrances but there's not a subway here in Puebla. These are actually other entrances and exits to the tunnels under Puebla. So it's not just the other more official one where you pay and check out the history. This is so cool. I can't imagine when it's actually open that you can literally just explore underneath the city. Right, that is awesome. I love it. You have to come visit Halinate La Barrio when you are in Puebla because this is so far my favorite neighborhood. This is so cool. This neighborhood is like a city of murals, hence the project name, Puebla Ciudad Murals. So Haile Neitla is absolutely incredible. I'm so glad we stumbled upon this neighborhood. Everyone here is so friendly. I think it's both of our favorite neighborhoods in Puebla yeah, now. Yeah, definitely. And it really is a hidden gem in the yeah. city of Puebla because walking through there, we hardly saw anyone. But yeah. when, if we did, they were locals or they lived in the neighborhood and they weren't like tourists or anything. We hear the church bells ringing back in the city center. And I think we are going to go get some drinks and food. So it's yeah, time to head back. Yeah, I think that means uh, eating <laughs> yeah. those bells. That's yep. our dinner bells. Right. <laughs> I don't think that's what they're intended for, but <laughs> definitely reminds us that we it's time to eat. Yep. Oh. 
Hey guys, so we just got a Samita Pablana, or just Samita for short. It is like a, like a torta that originates here in Puebla, but the difference is tortas can be like various different types of bread, where uh, Samita is always on the same type of bread. It's like a bread that doesn't use eggs and it has sesame seeds on top. It looks good. Yeah, typically mm -hmm. the ingredients always have like sliced avocado, um, some peppers, jalapeno cheese, things like that, and then they mix it with the meat. And now I got one of each they were serving. I think all three are pork, and then they each have sliced jalapeno. This one's got mushrooms, onions, and yeah, so it looks really, really good. Yeah, it looks delicious, and that bread, I love the way that bread looks too. So. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see what the verdict is. Oh wow, that's harder than I thought it would be. <laughs> Mm. Good? It's good. They're, mas they're mostly putting this one with like fatty pork meat and it contrasts differently with the really, really um, harder bread, their crunchier bread. It's a lot of flavor pop and the texture, the texture goes really well together. All right, I'm going to try a bite now. It looks like they got some cilantro on there too. I love fresh cilantro. Mm. So guys, these originate here in Puebla, like a mm. Puebla staple. What do you think? I like it. <clears throat> yeah, I definitely didn't expect the bread to be that hard either. The bread but is tasty though. The it's bread is really tasty. good. So this one here is not the super fatty pork. It's more like pork chops. Like, um, what would you call that? Like thinly sliced, thinly sliced pieces pork. of pork. Yeah. yeah. Almost like uh, back home, some of the types of barbecue, yeah. uh, barbecue sandwiches that you can get. They're mm -hmm. almost like that. It's like little strands of it. It sort of has a pork chop flavor. Let's try it. Again, that really tasty bread. Mmm. All right, we are on Avian de Seis Oriente. Yep, AKA the nickname of the street is Calle de Dulce, or Street of Candies. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm really gonna get in trouble here because <laughs> I have the biggest sweet tooth. Yes, she And does. all of these candy stores are literally enticing me. Yeah, it's like a little part of the town that's literally dedicated to selling candy and candy artwork that's native to this area. Tenemos también el camote poblano. Mm. Almendra? De almendra? Sí, por favor. Uno? Uno, ya, yeah, sí. Mm -hmm. A ver, señorita. Mm, gracias. Muchas gracias. Eh. Gracias. Que les vaya muy bien. Hasta luego. All right, we got this almond candy here. This whole thing, because the lady that owns the store, this was her favorite and she recommended it. And it's made here. It's a poblano. It's made locally. And then. Maracuya. And yeah, we got all this for 51 pesos. That's a great deal. So Pueblo City is also nicknamed the city of street lights because it has so many street lights. And they're actually, the French brought them over when they controlled Mexico in the 1860s. Because of that, this is also the only state in Mexico that actually celebrates Cinco de Mayo. Because of like marketing and stuff, Cinco de Mayo became a huge sensation in the US and other countries for drinking and eating tacos. But in Mexico, it's actually not a huge national holiday. It's really only celebrated here at Puebla because when the French invaded in the 1860s, on May 5th, the much smaller Mexican army defeated the French on their first invasion. So it's a state holiday here. But even it, I've heard from some of the locals, it's not like a huge, huge deal. It's usually like a parade and things like that. It's not like a huge party day like it is in the US and stuff like that. But the French did become in power after that. I think they were ruling around five years in Mexico. And that is when they bought in all the street lights to the city. So now those street lights and that I think they also inspired it in other ways, in various architecture ways. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Where did you come from? Mucho gusto, uh, United States. Okay. Estados Unidos. Yes. <laughs> My name is Yajin. Welcome to Puebla, Mexico. <laughs> Gracias. Or, or the world. ¿Dónde eres? Sinaloa. 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 Oh. Sinaloa. Oh. I was born in Sinaloa. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Adios. Hasta luego. Bye. Guys, it's been an amazing day in the beautiful city of Puebla. 
Yes, thank you so much for joining us. But make sure you stay tuned because tomorrow we have a lot planned. We're going to the world's smallest volcano and the world's largest pyramid. Yeah, we, and along with so many other awesome things that make Puebla so cool and unique, there's so many things that you can only find here in Puebla. So we're gonna keep exploring around the city. Honestly, we were just talking about how this city is quickly becoming one of our all-time favorite places in the world. Yeah, so absolutely. So make sure you like, subscribe, and turn that notification on so that you don't miss our next Puebla video. Yep, cheers guys, adios. Hasta luego. <laughs>